Okay. Welcome back. Pathfinder, second edition. Abomination Vaults. We're nearly halfway through it. And we just had our... Uh, near total party kill. Not quite a full total party kill. Not quite a full TPK. But pretty close. We lost three of our four characters. The only survivor was... Wibble Fizzlecrank, who always gets out alive. Um, mostly due to him being in the back of the room shooting a gun. So, uh, he got out alive, and he went back to Otari, and maybe he even had to go as far as Absalom in order to find a few more recruits interested in heading down into this crazy big dungeon near Otari, filled with all sorts of treasure. And find three companions he did, an eclectic bunch, just as eclectic as if you were playing in real life with a group of people. Let's go through them. First, we have Lurian Moongrave. Now, Lurian is an elf, uh, but the picture there is of an Asimar, and that's because, uh, looking through the token pack, I didn't see an elf, and I saw this Asimar, and I was like, okay, that looks pretty cool. We'll go with that. There you go. So, we have an elf fighter. Worships Sir Nunos. And, um... Yeah, so I didn't want to go with a champion again because we, we, you know, Garziel had been there for quite a while. So I wanted to try something a little different. So we went with just a sword and board fighter. Quite vanilla, for sure. But there's a lot of things you can do uh, in, in Pathfinder. There's a lot of things you can do with even a basic sword and board fighter. The number of directions you can take that is is quite stunning. Um, and so one of the things that I did was I grabbed Ancient Elf as my heritage, which gives you immediately a free archetype feat. And so I grabbed, um, Cleric Dedication. So it's sort of dipping into Cleric. So we're kind of a, a mini champion a little bit. We don't have much. We don't have many uh, aspects of being a Cleric at this point. The only thing it really gives us is our uh, is a couple cantrips. So, for cantrips we have stabilize, which is you know prevent somebody from dying at thirty feet away. I think that's kind of useful. And then I went with vitality lash, which isn't insanely good, but. But if we do come across some undead that are actually that actually have a vitality weakness, that's a pretty nice way to do some damage. Because right now it's a 4d6 vitality spell. Um so our spell DC is is not amazing. It's it's 19, it's okay. Uh, but yeah, mostly just if we come across an undead. Uh, specifically with a weakness, although honestly anything that takes vitality damage, uh, there could be worse things to do with our turn. Four d6 is going to average out to like 14 damage. Uh, which isn't much, and if they, uh, <laughs> if they make the save, it's 7 damage. Not great. That's why we kind of want to focus it on stuff that has a weakness. Which we haven't come across much, actually, that has vitality weakness. But, yeah, it's there. It's there if we need it. Uh, so other than that, fairly basic, just uh, sword and board. Except specifically, I wanted to go with spears. Because when I think of, you know, a gallant... Knight at the front of the line, I think of a sword, or I think of a shield and a spear, you know? Like 300. Uh, the problem is, you know, one-handed spears, not so hot so. 
rarely going to be the most recommended path to go down. But I don't care. We don't have to do everything completely optimal, and it's fine. So uh, we went with the Trident. Because the normal spear is not that... Is, I think it's a simple weapon. So it actually does 1d6. Whereas the Trident does 1d8. It doesn't really have anything special else about it, except you can throw it. Um, so there is maybe a thought of putting, like, returning, uh, you know, returning, um, rune on it so that you could throw it and then bring it back to your hand. It's not terrible, but it's a 20 feet range, so how often is that really going to come into play? Especially because one of the feats that I took was lunge, which lets us just extend our reach to 10 feet. I don't know. Uh, we also got Sudden Charge, so it's going to be nice to have that again. And a Swipe. We roll once as a for a melee strike, uh, but we compare it to the AC of up to two foes adjacent to each other, and uh, we can roll damage once to apply it to both of those. Does count as two attacks for the multiple attack penalty, but still, it lets us... Um, it lets us uh, roll at our max bonus against two. Uh, also, for a free feat, I got Battle Medicine. So this lets you do medicine. Uh, this basically lets you roll Treat Wounds, uh, but then uh, as a single action. But then it makes the target immune to Battle Medicine for one day. But it does not make them immune to or otherwise count as treat wounds. And I figure, honestly, he could just use this on himself. It is a manipulate, so it will provoke ops, but that's usually pretty uncommon. Um, so all in all, pretty good. And I want to for don't want to forget. We'll have to subtract the money. We'll have to go ask for money from Wibble. Uh, because, of course, as soon as everyone joins the party, you know, Wibble insists... That you hand in all your money. He will keep track of it for you. Don't worry. Uh, so five gold for the healer's toolkit. Wibble will certainly approve that expenditure. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, and then I think also... He has Quick Repair, and he has Crafting. Yeah, so he's going to want the Crafting Toolkit as well. Just a couple things that I forgot. Uh, uh, hmm. What is... What is the Crafting Toolkit? Repair Kit. Oh, I'm an idiot. Repair toolkit for two gold. Okay. So, uh, yeah, a bit all over the place, honestly. We gave him, um... I gave him medicine to kind of go with the cleric thing and be somewhat of, like... At least, like, the out-of-combat healer, if nothing else. And then I gave him quick repair, because he's the only one with a shield. Which is usually the only thing you care about repairing. So, yeah. Um, and then we also have Ward Medic, so we can actually treat wounds for up to two targets at once, and if we're a master, we can do four targets, legendary eight targets, uh, but it is important for another thing, I believe, another feat related to that that we'll get eventually, probably. Okay, um, <coughs> I, so then... When you make a level 5 character... Actually, was I even looking at the right chart? Yes, I was... Okay. So, when you make a level 5 character, you get 50 gold and 1 fourth level item, 2 third level, 1 second, 2 first level. Or you can just take 270 gold pieces. In hindsight, I probably should have just taken the 270 gold for all the characters. I think I only did it for one. Because uh, third level items, there isn't really that many that I care about. And then... First level, there really isn't that much that I care about. 
So I think I kind of just ended up wasting money for no good reason. Um, but one thing that we did get is full plate for Lurian. Uh, so with uh, with that and a plus one potency rune that I just spent money on, uh, he's up to 24 AC, 26 when he raises his shield. Pretty nice. 26 is like, you know, tough-ass enemy numbers. And he's got 71 HP, so, you know, he's, he's no slouch. We'll see how he does, but he's no slouch. Okay, so obviously not too complicated of a character. Yeah, he's he's going to be doing a lot of the same things that Garziel did. But he just gets a uh, reactive strike as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. We have Malig, Malig Grimmark. Uh, his name was originally Smoothstone. Uh, but then I saw that he joined... He's part of the clan Grimmark. So I was like, okay, that's a much better... That's a much better name. We'll update that real quick. There you go. Uh, so he's a ranger. He's a dwarf ranger. Bounty hunter. You know, pretty typical... Uh, yeah, I mean, basically Grey Boar, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, he exclusively uses a bow, pretty much. So we've got a striking composite short bow, plus one. So this thing's doing 2d6 plus one piercing damage. But uh, he does have this precision thing. So when he marks a target as his prey, as an action, um, then... From then on, the first time that he hits his prey in a round, he deals an additional 1d8 precision damage. So he gets a, a little bonus there. Not too shabby. And um, in addition to that, he does have an animal companion. And people recommended the bird as being like the best one. And we'll see. We'll see. I named it Hacks. Uh, 39 HP, 20 AC. Not stupendous. We're hoping it doesn't get targeted too much, but we'll see. Uh, it's not really much of a threat. It's mostly just to enable flanking for Lurian. Uh, but it has a 60-foot fly speed. Pretty fantastic. Uh, it has attacks, but obviously, like we said... With the uh, the animal companion rules, um, we're not going to want to do that too often. Although he does benefit from uh, my hunter's edge precision. So it also deals an extra one d eight damage. But the problem is, um, when we give it commands, when it doesn't attack, um, that uses our multiple attack penalty. I'm pretty sure we read that somewhere. And an animal. Blah, 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 blah. Where the hell did I see that? Gotta do like targeted Google searches now. God damn it. Okay. It's only when you're riding them that you share the multiple attack penalty. Uh, 
Okay. So Basilicus could have been doing more. Okay, so now... All right, that, that's a lot better then. So it does not share the penalty. So... We can have hacks do a Jaws attack plus 10, you know, and then it does 1d6 plus 2 if it's my hunted prey and an extra 1d8, which isn't uh, horrific. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Uh, and then it can also do its bird support benefit. So until the start of my next turn, my strikes that damage the creature and my bird threatens also deal 1d4 bleed damage, and the target is dazzled until it removes the bleed damage. Um, and Dazzled makes everything concealed to them, so they have to pass a DC-5 flat check, uh, if vision is their only precise sense, which is most creatures. So that's uh, a really good support benefit, and that's part of why people recommend it. Okay, well, it's good we learned that before, you know, we do all this stuff. Uh, then we also grabbed, uh, Initiate Warden, which gives us Gravity Weapon as a focus ability. And this makes us, so that on our first weapon strike each round, we gain a status bonus to damage equal to twice the number of weapon damage dice. That means that for one minute, every time we hit each, first time we hit each round, we do an extra four damage. And you can tell that we're kind of focused a lot of the time on just hitting once and doing it well. Uh, so that's good. And then we also got Enlarge Companion as a focus spell. Lasts for one minute, and it makes our Animal Companion enlarged. A creature is clumsy one. Its reach increases by five feet, and it gains a plus two status bonus to melee damage. I don't know when we'd ever do it, but there wasn't that many good choices I found. So I don't know. I thought it might be funny. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Pretty much that's all there is to say about Malig. He's a fairly simple character. Just ranged ranger, you know, with an animal companion. That's kind of all there is to say. And finally, we have Plishy. Whoops. Plishy. Plishy is a leshy. He's a fungus leshy. And he's a sorcerer. And he puts on a very, uh, you know, cute, harmless exterior. This little guy could do no wrong in this world. Uh, but he's an occult sorcerer that... Um, <laughs> There are some pretty dark aspects of it. Oh, yeah, his bloodline is aberrant. <laughs> so he, he basically worships Cthulhu. Um, And, yeah, he, uh, he casts some pretty dark spells. But, but, uh, he also casts Soothe, which is the occult heal. So he's also our healer, so don't worry too much. Okay, so, uh, yeah. I don't think a cult is, like, the most recommended, um, spell tradition. Or spell school, or whatever they call it. It, uh, it certainly lacks some of the, the best spells in the game. But, I don't think it's shit. So obviously we have Soothe, which is the occult version of healing. Uh, it's 1d10 plus 4 hit points, and plus 2 status bonus to saves against mental effects for the duration. Okay. If we compare that with heal... Heal is just 1d8 um, plus 8. And also, Heal has the flexibility that Soothe doesn't. But let's be honest, Heal doesn't really have flexibility. You're casting that two-action Heal almost every time. So that's not really a big loss. So, Heal uh, certainly has more guaranteed health. 1d8 plus 8. 
means that the minimum is 9, whereas the minimum on Soothe is 5 at rank 1. Uh, the max on Soothe is 14. The max on Heal is, is 16. So Heal has better minimum and better maximum. It's overall probably the better spell. What Soothe has going for it, then, is the plus 2 status bonus to saves against mental effects for 1 minute, which... In this dungeon, I think, is pretty good. We encounter a lot of mental effects. Um, I'm not saying Soothe is, is better than Heal, even in this situation. But it is a nice perk. Uh, that kind of helps it a little bit here. So, it's, our, it's, it's still good. I mean, it's not that big of a difference. And it, it'll be fine. And so... I, you know, Botha had the heal staff that gave her heal on, on the staff, and I wanted a soothe staff. There isn't a soothe staff. And I wasn't really sure how to make a staff. There seems to be a module that lets you do that, I guess, but it seems like it's not updated, so I wasn't sure. So I literally just took the, st the staff of healing and renamed it Staff of Soothing, and uh, I changed the heal item here to Soothe. And I kept Cantrip. Uh, I kept Stabilize, even though I don't think... Yeah, we can't actually cast Stabilize, so I probably should change that to something that is on the Occult spell list. But either way, we can now cast... Uh, there you go. We can cast Soothe three times per day from their staff. Um, I don't, I don't know what the stabilized like equ equivalent is on the occult thing. There, there, there isn't, there isn't one. I don't think there is one. I don't, I think there really is one. So, whatever. I mean, yeah. We'll never cast Stabilize from the staff, so whatever. It's just three extra Soothes per day at rank one. Uh, so, Cantrips. We still have Guidance. We still have Light, which we can throw on uh, Lurian. So that's always important. Uh, we have Forbidding Ward, which is sustained for up to one minute. So it does take up an action each round to keep it going, but it makes it so that uh, that ally gets plus one bonus to armor class and saving throws against the target for as long as you sustain it. And next level, uh, that bonus will increase to plus two. It's not bad. If you're not doing anything else with that extra action, giving Lurian an extra AC could be worse. Uh, we have Daze, and that's just because it was given to us for free by our Bloodline. It's really not a good cantrip, and we'll almost never use it. But it's there. And then we have Needle Darts, which is quite a good cantrip. 60 feet range, really good. Uh, it is an attack that targets AC. That is the probably the worst aspect of it. But it's there. Um, and... It, uh... No, I'm sorry. Okay, Forbidden Ward will be heightened its rank 6 spell, so that's quite a while from now. Uh, needle Darts... <sighs> you shape three needles out of a piece of metal in your possession and send them flying in a tight group toward one target. They deal 3d4 piercing damage and might cause bleeding. That's if you crit. Uh, so it'll be 3 bleed. Then, because we're heightened up to third rank, uh, the damage is actually 5d4 piercing damage, and the bleed damage is 5 on a crit. Uh, I still do, It's not quite as good as Electric Arc. I still think that is just the overall better spell for most of the time, but I'm okay with Needle Darts, especially the 60-foot range. I, I like that. Uh, you do have to have a piece of metal in your possession, and the metal returns to you after the attack. 
I don't know exactly what that means, but I do have silver on me, so there you go. And I think there was some discussion about that, like applying silver. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're obviously not going to worry too much about it. But I think most people are using just like a silver piece. Yeah. So that means we can target silver, you know, weaknesses or bypass silver. Anything needs silver damage. So that's nice. Uh, okay, just quickly going down spell list, because there's a lot of spells. Sorcerers are spontaneous casters. Um, so we can cast, you know, uh, Soothe four times per day, or can we can cast each one of these once per day, whatever. Dizzying Colors is Prismatic Spray. It's a 15-foot cone, targets Will, and uh, on a success, causes them to be dazzled for a round. Failure, stunned one, blinded one. Uh, stunned one, blinded for one round, and dazzled for one minute. And crit failure, stunned for one round, blinded for one minute. It's pretty nice for a rank one spell. Uh, it has no heightened effect, but, you know, those are always good statuses. And the will, your will save, your will check, uh, you know, continues to go up. So it's just kind of always good at rank one. We also have Forest Barrage. This one does heighten. Um, you know, somewhat slowly. But we can cast this four times a day, you know, 3d4 plus three damage. It's not amazing, but it's guaranteed to hit. And like people say, that is kind of, kind of handy. Uh, I would have liked to have gotten it, uh, thrown it in there at third rank. Because then that would be um, 64. But, yeah. Uh, Soothe, we went over. Spider Sting was given to me for free. It's a touch attack um, that doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but can inject them with this poison, which can cause enfeebled. Uh, Calm is a 10 foot burst. Uh, will save. If they fail the save, they cannot use hostile actions. For, you know, you have to sustain it up to a minute. Uh, but if you attack them, then they, you know, they cease to be affected by calm. But still, being able to just shut down, like, two enemies or something like that in a battle <laughs> for up to a minute is extremely good. Um, so I think that's pretty powerful. Revealing Light. This is sort of fairy fire. Uh, it's a ten-foot burst. It causes creatures to become concealed if they're invisible. And uh, it also causes them to be dazzled, which is nice. And if they... It is a save, though. It's not automatic. So if they fail the save, they're affected for a minute. If they succeed the save, they're affected for only two rounds. So I think overall Fairy Fire is probably better when you're just wanting to turn stuff visible. But I didn't have access to it. Stupefy... Um... I think this was also given to me for free. So it's a will save against one creature. If they fail, they're stupefied two for one minute, uh, which affects their will saving throws, spell attacks. You know, this is something you use on spellcasters. If we come across one. Uh, fear, obviously pretty good. But the reason we've heightened it is that it can now target five creatures with a will save. And if they fail, they're frightened two. Even if they succeed, they're frightened one. So that's pretty nice at third rank of the five creatures. We have a soothe third rank as well. So that's 3d10 plus 12 healing. And Vampiric Feast was given to us. Another touch attack against one creature. Uh, deal 6d6 void damage and gain temp equal to half the damage taken. Um, I certainly wouldn't have picked it, but I got it for free. Then, also, we've multiclassed into Bard, or, you know, we've taken the Bard dedication. 
So we get a couple um couple more cantrips. This is also occult spells, by the way. So we get detect magic and figment, which can be used to create a diversion. Um which basically just makes us hidden. Uh, and then we can strike uh, for off guard. Not very useful. I don't know. There wasn't much else to pick. And then we got a first rank spell. So I took Summon Fey. So whenever we want to cast that, we get to look at all the Fey creatures we can summon. And our focus spell for our aberrant tradition, aberrant bloodline, is tent Tentacular, Tentacular, Tentacular. You see it. Uh, limbs. Our arms turn into long, pliable tentacles. Increasing uh, the reach of our touch range spells. Uh, so it increases the reach to 10 feet automatically instead of 5 feet. But whenever you cast a spell, you can add an additional action to this casting to temporarily extend your reach to 20 feet. And because we've heightened it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yep. So <laughs> it's now extend your reach 30 feet. So we can actually reach 35 feet and cast, um, say, Vampiric Feast or Spider Sting. You know, it works. Uh, so that's basically it for Plishy. He can also speak with Fungus. And has Intimidating Glare. So we can intimidate stuff. This little pushy, he's, he's got a very intimidating glare. You don't, want to, you don't want him to look at you like that. Okay, that's the crew. That's the new crew. So <laughs> we're going to attempt to fight uh, Protonus again. So let's bump Protonus back to full health. Um, I don't think anything else is really different here. It's probably been feasting on Snonk's body or something, you know. But we're going to cleanse this place of this foul creature. So we do have, uh, you know, a fairly range-heavy group now. But we'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes. You know, Lurian's AC and health are pretty damn high. So hopefully he can kind of just take things uh, solo up front. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, before we do that, let's scout. I don't know who's scouting anymore or anything like that. I think Meleg is probably scouting. It doesn't really matter. We want the scout buff, that's all. Okay, and uh, let's... Let's get it going. Oh, I never ended that encounter. Whoops. Damn it. Uh, also, everyone needs uh, 100 XP, so we're all at the same... Point. Okay. Now let's do it. This is a low threat encounter, apparently. Was it that before? It must have been. Yeah, I think it was, because he's only one level higher. It's like, I don't know why it was so insane. But it just was just fucking was man okay here's the thing if he just sits back here 
Okay, again, this is what it says. She fights from the room's west end using the rusty chains to strike her foes. Okay? And if we're incredibly charitable and just say straight out 20 feet, that's how far that shit can attack. Now, if you count these chains up here or something, I guess, yeah, he can. she can attack anywhere. But as it is, why the fuck would I not just sit here in the back and snipe the shit out of this person? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to devise a stratagem about that right now. Uh, that's pretty good. Now, I don't think that's a... I don't think that's going to be a crit. I guess it doesn't matter. I'm not... I don't, yeah, I actually don't have the, uh, the those talismans anymore. Because that was Botha. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, not a crit on an 18, unfortunately. We need a perfect 20. Uh, decent, though. 19 damage. And that's that. Plishy! So many spells now. Uh, probably just Needle Dart, right? We don't need to get crazy here. And it's got a 60-foot range. Perfect. Although, no, we'll want to step out for cover purposes. Okay. Uh, needle dart. Oh, look at that. Needle darts, adamantine, cold iron, silver. Well, we're definitely using silver, right? Attack. Plus 11. Damn. Okay. Yeah. That's why, you know, you kind of want to go for those reflex saves and fort saves and stuff. Okay, I could command hacks to go in, but why would I? We're just going to shoot. So we're going to mark it as my prey. And then... I guess, yeah, I don't really have much else that I could throw out at it. But we could cast Gravity Weapon. And then shoot. Oh, yeah. First weapon strike this round. Shoot. And roll a nine and miss. Oof. I guess it's not that shocking. Oh, well. All right. So, yeah, I think Cretonus uh, reads the writing on the wall and is going to have to move in. I get, like, what if I was DMing this again? Like, what would I... I would just be like, well, yeah, she, she's not leaving that area, so good job. I mean, I guess. I feel like most, but the players wouldn't know that. They would just go in unless they leave and then do this strategy because they're like, why would we go in? We'll wait for her to come to us. So, yeah, uh, let's just do it. Let's just get in there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 5, um, 15, 20, 25. Actually, no. You wouldn't go that far. Because uh, she has a ranged chain attack. So, that was two movements. And then this is her attack. Crit! Well, that doesn't make me feel too good. Uh, we can shield block. So we will. Uh... Yeah, we don't have Divine Shield like Garziel had, so it's 8 damage instead of 10. And also, his shield is not as durable. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's like half broken already. And uh, he is grabbed by the chain. And he's taken Bleed, okay. The thing is, though, that I have lunch, so I don't actually have to move to make any sort of attacks. I can all we can just beat each other here from where we're at, and that's probably what I would do, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's just lunge plus sixteen miss and some shit ass rolls 
And plus 11 with the second. Also a miss. And then we'll raise our shield. Great. Wibble. Great. Devise a stratagem, Wibble. Get us out of this problem. Uh, 11. That might be enough. Yeah, that should be enough. Thirteen damage to Cretonus. Plishy. Should we do we should bust out something bigger, right? Something uh debilitating, perhaps. Like um dizzying colors. Let's use that. I don't know quite where you'll let me stand here without falling into the pit. Perfect. Roll your will save. Hey, you failed. No, why is that saying success? What? Success by negative five. I don't think you understand how this works, by the way. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, and unnerving gaze. We probably should have... Okay, well, yeah, we have to do that now. Uh, for Wibble. So let me link this. Wibble, roll your will save. No problem. Okay, um... Yeah, you definitely failed. So I don't know. I don't know why you're going on about this. It was a 16. Unless do you know something I don't? You rolled a 4 plus 11 plus 1. It was DC 20. I don't know I don't know why it's saying success. <sighs> Anyways, you failed, you are stunned one, blinded for one round, and dazzled for one minute. That's pretty brutal. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. I'm saying, rank one spell, it seems just really good. And Prismatic Spray, I guess, has been in D&D &D for decades now, so... It's one of those just kind of mainstays. I guess they probably have to make it kind of good. Um... Okay, so stunned, you can't act. Oh, okay. Why? Each time you regain actions, reduce the number you regain by your stunned value. Then reduce your stunned value by the number of actions you lost. <sighs> okay. So it's very similar to slowed. Except slowed seems worse than stun. If I'm reading this correctly. Um. Yeah, because you can get like stunned five. And so then your first turn, you lose three actions. You lose, you know, all your actions. And then the next turn, you'd lose two actions and then you'd be done. Um, whereas if you're slowed one for one minute, every round you lose one action. So, they're similar, but not quite the same. So really, uh, she loses one action next round, and that's it. 
Uh, but she's also blinded for that whole round. Um, which is certainly problematic for her. And then after that, she's dazzled for one minute. Okay. And that was Plishy's turn. So now Plishy's going to have to make the will save. Um, oh yeah, you should not have Soothe. I think I was just testing something. Uh, do you have Undaunted? I don't know. Uh, plus one circumstance bonus to saves against emotion effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's an emotion effect. It's not? Oh, no. But it's based on an emotional response. It's see you see the face of a departed loved one in place of their face. That's a fucking emotional response. If I'm the Terminator and I have no emotions, I would not be frightened by it. Fuck you. All right. Well, I crit saved against it anyways. Okay. Uh, Maleg is going to command hacks to go. Um. Can it take reactions? Nothing says that it can't take reactions, but I don't think it has one to spend. Oh yeah, I guess it does. Um, I guess it can, it just flings out. It has to pass the DC 11 flat check to hit it. Which it did not, so, uh, sorry, kid. And then I can have, uh, hacks attack it or use the support benefit. It's already dazzled, and the bleed damage is not too much, so I guess we'll just go for a jaw. It. Now... It should have... It should have, uh, precision. Yeah. When you hunt prey, your animal companion gains the action's benefit. Is this an action that I have to take, do we think? Oh yeah, I mean, I guess it marks it. Um, hold on. No, but I have to, um... Uh... I have to actually place that on him in order for him to... did this. Yeah, okay. There you go, 12 damage from Hax. Not too shabby. Although, he should definitely be off guard to everybody, right? No? How is that not what Blinded does? How is that not what Blinded does? It does not matter for this attack, but it's just... You... It has to be. Yeah, again, it's this complicated system that it doesn't automatically make you off guard in case you have a different precise sense. Uh, and he does have pain sight, I suppose. But that's only... that That's not... That's not a... That's just a creature it sees is dying. I don't know what really the purpose of such thing is. Um, so yeah, he's, he's definitely off guard. So I guess we'll just slap that on him. 
Okay, so that was Hax's turn, and that's all done. Um... Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and that was one of Malig's actions. So now Malig is going to shoot. I can't imagine why he wouldn't. Seems like a good use of abilities. Oh, hoo, hoo. Oh, hoo. well. Look at that delicious formula. Oh, just... Two times, 2d6, plus 5, plus 1d8, plus 1d10. Ooh, that is very nice. Max damage here, which, of course, we won't get. 12, 17, uh, 25, 35, 70 damage is max. Pretty nice. Unlikely to be max, but, uh, yeah, we would have actually crit on an 18 right now. Okay, 42 damage I will take. Very good, nearly dead. Uh, crit specialization for a bow. If they're adjacent to a surface, it gets stuck to that surface by the missile. Target is immobilized and must spend an interact action to attempt a DC-10 athletic check to pull the missile free. Nice. Okay. Um, that was pretty good. We do have a follow-up that we could make, so... I guess we may as well. Ooh! Is that two 20s? Is that two 20s in a row? <laughs> okay, I got humbled. Minimum crit damage possible. I got humbled. Alright, um... My leg has to uh, roll his will save. See if he becomes frightened of this thing. Yeah, I rolled a one. I think he's actually frightened three then. Uh, 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 mm, unnerving gaze, frightened three. Oh well, combat's almost over. Actually, can I mention this? Um, okay, it's not doing it at the moment, but it was doing it when I first opened. There it is. You see that? You see that little spasm where it moves up. Even though I'm going in a downward direction. You see that little little blip? There you go. Uh, I just want to point out that that is due to this Razer mouse. The Razer Death Adder Pro. Not a cheap mouse. And I have not had it that long. Probably like eight months now. And it's been doing that now for like a couple months. And apparently it's a known issue. And it's like, it's crazy. That at this point in time, Razor can't figure out how to make a mouse wheel properly. <sighs> Anyways, just a heads up if you're ever considering a Razor mouse. Okay, so Cretonus is blind and only has two actions. Um... She does have imprecise senses, though, of uh, everyone's general location. So I guess she'll keep swinging at Lurian. Um, because what else is she really going to do with her two actions? So, um, yeah, she'll try a swing. She'll go the flat check. Fail. Okay, so that was her plus 17 strike. Now would be her plus 12. Okay, the plus 12 is going to go through. And the plus 12 hit. Go figure. Uh, we will block. Because blocking is fun and fun for you. Um, Yeah, his shield's getting shredded a little bit more than Karziel's did. Ouch. Uh, but that was its whole turn. 
So now Cratonus is not blinded and thus not off guard, but is still dazzled. So that's um, DC 5 flat check. Lurian's going to 5 foot step, not provoke ops, and then is going to just swing it. Yeah. I mean, he's not really here for damage, let's be honest. Oh, wait, I was grabbed still. Okay, pretend I didn't. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. The... <laughs> pretend I didn't. So he he used a lunge. Um, and fortunately, the off guard did not make the difference there. Uh, now he's going to try to escape, though, which I think is an attack check. So maybe he wouldn't bother. Now, I think he still wouldn't bother. Uh, so he'll just make the second swing. There's another hit. There you go, 16 damage. And that is the end of the fight. Uh, regeneration 10 deactivated by Holier Silver. Oh, no. We're going to have to find some silver here. That's going to rely on Plishy. Yeah. Because uh, I don't think Wibble has any silver on him. We certainly don't have any holy abilities. Unless Vitality Lash counts as holy damage. No, it's just divine. No holiness there. No, we don't have Lay on Hands or anything. Um, Wibble can't really do much. Oh no, I know what Wibble can do. Wibble can aid Lurian in his escape attempt. Aha! Oh-ho! He will aid with his impressive... Um... Mm, uh, occultism. Because this is an occult creature. So he can, understands the nature of the chains. He does... God damn it, he does understand it. Okay, it's st still a... Uh, whoops. No, no, no. It's still a... Uh, it's still a plus one. Better than not having it. Uh, Alright, Plishy, you need to just hit with this needle dart. Silver. Again, if I were the DM, I'd just be like, okay, yeah, you hit him, and he's dead. If they recognize that they need to kill him with silver, because that little pop-up wouldn't show up for players, and unless they recall knowledge and stuff, they would not realize that he's going to get back up. Um, or I guess, you know, he would go to Dine 3, maybe. But, uh, you know, the encounter wouldn't end. I'd be like, well, he's not dead, you know. Like, oh, shit. Uh, attack. Plus 11. Hit. <laughs> big, big dice. Okay, he died. Done. She died. I'm sorry. There you go. We succeeded where the others failed. What does that mean? Probably not much. We succeeded because we didn't rush in like idiots. But overall, we we did quite a bit better. Uh, yeah, so I don't sweat bleed damage afterwards. We don't have to worry about the aid and all that, so that's good. And his frighten goes away. Okay. So he... Malig's going to uh, focus, because that's good. And while he does that, Lurian will treat wounds. Let's get that on his bar. Medicine, DC 20. Uh, plus 11. You rolled a 6, my friend. That's no good. 
Okay, well, Plishy will take care of you a little bit. You know, just don't, uh, don't ask what exactly is soothing you, and you'll be fine. Would you like to consume a spontaneous spell slot of first rank or higher from any of the following spellcast entries? Oh yeah, there was something about this, wasn't there? I think you can just spend a spell slot instead of charges. Yeah, you can reduce the number of charges it takes to activate a stat by supplementing with their own energy. Uh, we will almost never want to do that. Oh, yeah! Right, so the, uh, the Staff of Healing bumps up all your heal spell casts from either the Staff or yourself, uh, to increase the healing by one. So, I guess we would do the same thing for Soothe. There you go. There's a little 12 health for you. It's not very much. We'll probably want to wait an hour here. Uh, but in the meantime, I don't know if there's anything to search here. Nope. Okay. And, uh, well, there is something to search, isn't there? Wibble's former companions. And yes, we will be looting them. Because there isn't a good reason why I wouldn't. Um, all this stuff is definitely here. It didn't go anywhere. And it would be a really dickish DM, I think, to if a party nearly wiped and then they rolled up new characters and they went right back to the same room and it's like, oh yeah, they're all gone. You can never get that stuff ever again. Go fuck yourself. I mean, I could see maybe a DM putting it in a different room somewhere, but I would have to have a much better understanding of like the dungeon and I'm just going room by room. So I, I can't really do that other than just like tossing it in a random room. And then what's the point? So fuck it, we get all our shit. Um, carrying all this is going to be a bit of a bitch. Uh, Maleg can carry uh, eight before encumbering. Lurian can carry almost nothing else. Plishy probably can't carry almost shit. He can carry a little bit. And Wibble, of course, can't carry much. So most of this is going to Maleg. So we'll take the healing staff. The Necklace of Fireball says it's worth 44, but it's also nearly expelled, expunged, um, used. It's nearly used. So I don't know if it's really worth that. <laughs> or is this like its adjusted price? This might be actually its adjusted price. Because what is it worth normally? No, nope, it's worth 44 gold normally. Okay. How would I adjudicate it? Because clearly there's beads missing. It's actually... There's only one of the 46 left. So this thing's probably worth like 10 gold. Or something. I mean, it's really not worth much. Uh, the Wand of Heal. Definitely much less useful. Um, because... Only Wibble can use this now. And he doesn't tend to use his wands. But it is something uh, that he could do, especially, like, out of combat. Okay, that was, uh, that was Botha. Snonk. Ah, oh, Snonk. Hey, we're gonna, I gotta bring back Snonk someday. What a great character. He's got the hatchet. Um, which I'm going to give to Lurian as the only real melee. Composite Longbow is worth 20, so I guess we probably want it. And then the Retribution Axe is worth 60, so we'll sell that. His bulk is going to be shooting up. Uh, and then Studded Leather Armor, plus 1. 
Is Wibble... Okay, maybe Wibble will wear this. That's a 21 AC. Um, but it does reduce his speed to 15. That is pretty brutal. He has no strength whatsoever. So no, I, I don't think he's going to live with that sort of penalty. Uh, but maybe Maleg will wear it, who's now encumbered. Twenty-two AC, ten feet. Oh, oh, because he's encumbered. Okay, yeah. Let's uh, let's drop the leather. Okay, twenty feet. Good. That that's fine. Okay, what else from Snonk? Uh, the Everlight Crystal, the Bracelet of Dashing. These are pretty good things. Um. I, I could see uh, Lurian having the bracelet of dashing. Take this, take this. Snog had 12 gold that he was hiding from Wibble. Take that. And Garziel. Oh, yeah, boy. This is a lot of shit to carry, actually. Okay, so we have the Cooperative Blade. This, the Sturdy Shield. Yeah, I mean, we're probably going to be selling all this stuff, because it's not too useful. And then the plus one Splint Mail. I don't think we can carry this. Okay, we're going to have to just go back to town. Because this, this is too much. Um, uh, and then he had one healing potion on him. And the keys as well. Which we'll also give to Lurian because he goes through doors. And four gold for Wibble. Okay, so we're going to go back to town. And we will, uh, we will bury our companions in the swamp. <laughs> um, <coughs> okay. So we're going to sell, um... Mm-hmm, 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 not much. Yeah, I mean, I could keep the second sturdy shield just to have it, but um, money is good. We all like money. We could also spend some time transferring the uh, the ghost touch rune onto Malig's bow. That's an option. We also probably should pass some time for the time that it took to find these new people. I think that's reasonable. But alright, let's sell the sturdy shield for 50 gold. Sell the striking warhammer for 50 gold. We're getting up there in money. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I guess we prob. I don't know. Do we? I mean, it must apply, right? So I suppose we'll spend the amount. So that's seven gold, five silver to transfer that. And now he has Ghost Touch. Supposedly. 
Um, so then we can remove it from this. And now it's worth 100, so we'll sell it for 50. Cooperative Blade. I don't know, man. It's a fine sword. And I guess we could give it to Lurian. Just because... It does... Was trying probably to... What? Piercing. But the hatchet does slashing if we needed a different weapon. So, I don't know. Do we sell this relic? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. Kind of funny. Well, we'll we'll make note, I guess, in game of of whoever we sell it to, in case we might need it again someday, for some purpose. But. Like, honestly, you could just give it to Wibble to hold in his other hand, because it gives plus two item bonus to checks to aid. He could really be the aid extraordinaire with it. For a total of plus six to all his aid rolls. But, I'd probably rather have 125 gold pieces. So... There you have it. Pretty wild stuff. Uh, okay, and then... More selling. The Staff of Healing is worth uh, 45 gold. Deposit Longbow and this together. That's uh, 40 gold. The Plus One Splint Mail, that's worth 80 gold. Man, oh man, we're rolling in it. And the Necklace of Fireballs is kind of whatever I decide I'm going to give myself. So I'd normally get 22 gold for it. I think if you had just used the 66, that would cut its value in like half. So that would bring it down to like 11 gold. And then we should cut that again. So let's just say 6 gold. Fuck it. I could have kept it, but fuck it. And then the uh, the three valuable bottles. That's another 60 gold. We're rolling in it. Look at that. 900 gold pieces we've got. What are we going to purchase? Uh, what's important to us? Probably more damage. But if we look at, uh, say... Well, no, okay. So if we look at potency runes, because, you, you know, the next thing... Would probably be like plus two potency. That's a level 10 item costing 935 gold pieces. We're pretty close to getting one of those. Pretty damn close, but not quite. And the armor potency, I guess, is plus one, but I only really care about armor on Lurian. So, I don't know. I, I I guess... It's a question of, like, you know, what... Um, what sort of things do you buy, you know, as you go through? There's a lot of... Potentially good little magical items, I guess. Not everything is just a clear cut. Like, here's your plus one to your weapons. Here's plus one to your armor. I think those are the most important. But obviously the, the next striking rune is way off. Uh, Raider striking is level 12, costing 1,065. Major's level 19. 
Honestly, though, if I just save up a little bit more <laughs> and spend all my money on this and give it to probably Malig, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. But then there's also all the... Um, property runes of which there is a lot so like wounding is a property rune that's a level 7 item 340 gold when you hit a creature with a wounding weapon you deal an extra 1d6 persistent bleed damage now that's not very good for our case because we're encountering a lot of undead and stuff like that and ghosts but you know there's things disrupting um, which I apparently don't even have as in the game, unless they renamed it. Um, I'm sure I could find just a big list of property runes by level. So level, say, five or six, you've got, like, demolishing... Vitalizing. There you go. Vitalizing deals an extra 1d6 persistent vitality damage to undead. And on a critical, they're also enfeebled one until the end of your next turn. So that's probably in here. Yep, there it is. That would cost 150 to throw on. Now we have Ghost Touch. Because we're worried about ghosts all the time. But... I'd probably get more value for my money and my hits over the course of the thing from this. But I think, yeah, for now, let's let's not sweat it too much. So, but we, sp we spent some time. We went back to town, so we'll just say we healed up and not worry about it too much. And uh, blah, blah, blah. We didn't spend the day or the night. But I really should skip four. Again, I don't think it matters too much. Except that we should do another attack on the town. I just don't know how to do it. You know, I don't know if I go back to that map and we just like grab a bunch of undead. Or something. I don't know. So maybe I don't care that much. But let's just skip. I don't know. What do we think? How long do you think it took him to go and get... Let's go here. And then we'll pass a few hours from that day. Like there. Okay. We're all happy with that. Probably. Moving on. Feet delete Cretonus. Let's go uh, through here. Boom. Open the other door as we go. Wibble bringing up the rear. Three cells line the south wall, their bars only a few inches apart. Each cell contains a heap of rotted flesh and shattered bone. The locks on these cell doors have all seized shut due to age. Opening one requires a hero to succeed at a DC-20 athletics check to force it open. Uh, now you'll notice... Hold on, that it says FORCE IT OPEN THERE in all capitals? And, yeah, that's because this is an action, and if you don't have a crowbar, you get a minus two penalty. Now, I'm pretty sure Garziel had a crowbar the whole time, so thankfully I don't think we were ever breaking the rules. <sighs> Um, but if you succeed, you break it open, and if you critically succeed, you avoid damaging it, but if you critically fail, you jam it, and you get a minus two penalty on future attempts to force it open. So, it's important to note anytime they, like, capitalize shit like that. Or a single DC-20 thievery check to disable the jam mechanism. 
The center cell holds the only item of interest, a copper key that glitters within the fleshy muck. This spare key can open the locked supply room. The creature in the cell consumed the key's last bearer decades ago, but couldn't digest copper. In each cell, the fleshy detritus has coalesced into a strange creature called a Shangrigol, a nearly mindless amalgamation of undeath and twitching life. These three Shangrigol heaps remain motionless until one of them is disturbed, at which point they all slither forward to attack. The Shangrigols don't need to open the cell doors to get out, as they can ooze between the bars with their undulating step. They pursue the heroes as best they can and fight until destroyed. Okay. So they remain motionless until one of them is disturbed. But it's, like, obvious that they're a creature, right? It's... This is what it looks like. I mean, that clearly there's just something wrong with that. So... I think we recognize them as creatures. They just are motionless. Um, now I saw, because I'm the GM, <laughs> that they are weak to vitality damage and resistant to piercing and slashing damage. Ordinarily, you'd have to succeed on a recall knowledge and ask if they have any weaknesses. So we could do that, I guess, just to make it a little bit more uh, on the level. And I failed. Now, what does that mean for me now as a solo player? That I am not allowed to use any of those weaknesses? I don't know. I don't know. It's all kind of fuzzy. And obviously, that's going to be why... Doing this solo is just easier. Much like if you play, like, Gloomhaven. If you play Gloomhaven solo, uh, you are recommended to bump up the difficulty. Because the game is easier, because you have perfect knowledge of all of your characters. And you have knowledge of um, what each character is going to do that turn. You can perfectly coordinate with yourself. Whereas when you're playing with a group, you're not allowed to do that. Uh, so it's sort of a similar thing. I don't know. I don't think it makes a huge difference. Uh, I don't. I mean, I probably wouldn't just start spamming <sighs> Vitality Lash. Um, but since we're here, I guess we'll just let loose the first... Uh, you know, we'll just do it. Okay, and it gets to roll a plus 14 for half damage. That would be 5, but he's weak to it. There you go. Now, would I do more damage by piercing? I don't know. Maybe not. Probably not. What's my average damage going to be for Lorien? 2d8 plus 4, so... Uh, average would be 13 piercing, minus 5, 8. So, yeah. But, Vitality Lash is two actions. So, take your pick. Uh, um, let's see. I don't think we have any other good combat music, so let's just... The Skittering Darkness. I don't know. It's always a good, it's always a good pick. Oh, we got to get our scouting bonus. We scouted out this situation, no doubt. This is a severe encounter for us. All 
All right, Magleg is going first. Magleg is going to mark him as his prey. And then he's just going to fire his bow and miss because he rolled a three. And then he's going to roll a plus nine and hits with no precision damage for a very low amount of damage. Great. All right, Plishy. Hmm. There's quite a few options, I suppose. We'll, we may bust out Calm at this point. Or not at this point, but during this fight. But let's start with Needle Darts. Always a good amount of fun. Silver, attack, roll, 5d4. 11. Um... That's that's it, six damage. And then for our third action, we will put Guidance on Lurian. Okay, so they have an ability called Undulating Step. Uh, it strides for two actions, ignoring difficult terrain, fitting through tight spaces as though it were a tight, tiny creature. Okay. And they have speed 20. So 5, 10, 15, 20 uh, for two actions. And then it's going to use Fleshy Slap. You know. They can't be flanked, so keep that in mind. Yeah, okay. Miss. Missing on a 9. I like that. That 26 AC doing work. Uh, this one. Now, I imagine it can attack through the bars, right? Are we allowing that? No, fuck it. We won't do that. We'll, um... Oh, that is true. No matter which way he moves, he will get a reactive strike. Uh, but that means we won't be able to shield block. But I'm willing to accept... I hate passing up an op. It feels so alien to me to say, no, I will not do an opportunity attack. But I know that the damage is not going to be too special. God damn it. I have to. Seven damage. Was it worth it? Anyways, now it's going to use Fleshy Slap. And miss. Okay, good. We didn't, uh, we didn't waste anything. Third one is going to Undulate and Step. 5, 10, 15, 20. And then it's going to shoot a Bone Shard. Uh, it's gonna shoot a bone shard at Hax, because I'm feeling vindictive. Hit. For 14 damage. <laughs> um... Is that really only 20 feet? Yeah, I guess it... No. Did you get a minus 5 on that roll? Why did you got get a minus five on that roll? How are you? It wouldn't have mattered. Whatever. All right, Wibble Fizzle Crank. He is the man for the job, but he just, you know, he's, he's going to step back. And he's going to target this thing. And he's going to devise an awesome stratagem that's going to... Yeah, that should probably still work. Uh, yep, there you go. And that's a hit. Blah, blah, blah. 20 damage. Boom. That's his turn. Uh, Lurian probably wants to avoid being flanked. 
But to do that, we will just kill this creature, and it will be dead. So he's going to strike it. Or do we want a Vitality Lash? Okay, yeah, let's Vitality Lash. They don't have Ops. Nice. That's pretty juicy. And it rolled a 1. See ya, pal. 45 damage from a cantrip on my fighter. <laughs> that is very much best case scenario right there. Uh, Alright, and then I will raise my shield as my third action. Okay, Malig is going to mark this thing as his prey. And... I guess, yeah, we'll just do that. And he's going to shoot. Critically missing. On a one. Uh, and then he's going to... Oh God, I'd hate... I hate to have hacks in there. It seems a little dangerous, to be honest. Just so hacks can, like... Oh, hold on, let me just see. Okay, this is the first time you hit your hunted brain around. You deal the extra precision. Okay, then he'll... He'll do the plus nine. Bucking two ones in a row. Didn't the last combat he rolled two crits in a row? What the hell is that? Fishy. Um, now calm. They're not quite, I don't think, in range for a calm burst. Ten foot burst. And of course it won't let oh there it is. Look at that. That looks good to me. But they very well might be immune to mental and emotions and stuff. They are not. I wouldn't know that without recalling knowledge. And this is why, you know, playing the game normally in a group with a DM. Definitely trickier. Uh, all right, so you two have to roll. Why is there only one? Okay, 15 is a failure. 19 is not a failure, but I only, really only need one of them to fail. And that's that one. You are calm, my friend. So... Oh, technically... Oh, so the spell effect is the minus one to attack rolls. Uh, we don't have an effect for the non-hostility. Eh. We, we know what's up. We know what we're doing. Um, and then Plishy does have a third action. I guess we'll give Maleg, um, Guidance. Okay, heap. So he, it can't take any hostile actions. So what does it do? Does it just sit here? Does it go back to its, like, fucking den? Do we think that's what would happen? It would just go back to its hole? I guess we'll do that. It's just going to go back to its hole. We're not going to op it. That would be dumb. And it just goes back to being motionless. Because if we left, you know, and we ran away and all that, eventually these things would probably go back to their hole, right? I don't know. I don't know, man. There's not a rule book for this shit. But this thing is going to move 20 spaces. 5, 10, 15. 
Uh, and it will take a hostile action with a fleshy slap. Critical miss. And then another fleshy slap. Miss. Lurian's AC is just god mode. Wibble Fizzlecrank. Uh, I believe he has to reload his gun. And then he's going to devise the best stratagem we've ever seen. Shit. And then he'll demoralize. Could also aid. He should have aided. Okay, Lurian uh, will do a Vitality Lash. That's the way to go nowadays. Still, 14 damage. That's almost certainly more than he would have gotten with his uh, trident. And then he'll raise his shield. It's not ideal, but he's mostly here as a tank now, so that's fine. Uh, all right, let's just shoot with guidance. Good. Not very much damage, but good. Uh, then he'll command hacks to move here and uh, try this. Hey, nice. On an 11. I don't know why I moved behind him. We can't flank. Uh, okay. And then Maleg has a third action. Probably just fire off another arrow for the hell of it. All right. The she. The she has to sustain the calm. So that's one action. And then for two action, probably... Uh, probably just Needle Dart. We don't need to get fancy. Miss. Oh, well. Rolls are shitty. The other one is just sitting in its hole. Uh, this one is going to really make a concerted effort here to fleshy slap. Miss. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Critical miss. Come on. It's very upset. Miss. Lurian, untouchable. Untouchable. What are you really rolling 19 there? Yeah. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, that was it. Wibble fizzle crank. This stratagem, though, this is the one. That's good enough. Good. They're really annoying to kill if you don't have that super crit on Vitality Lash. Alright, well, speaking of which, we may as well slam it again. Decent. Nope, nothing. And he raises his shield. Okay, my leg. Um, let's just fire. One of these will be good. Eh, good, good, good. We'll do uh, a second shot. Critical miss. And then we'll have Hax go because he does not follow the fucking multiple attack penalty. Damn. And a plus five. Critical miss. All right, we tried. Plishy has to sustain the calm. And then... Nine damage. Magic missile is going to do, on average... Um... Ten? D4 average is 2.5. So 2.5 plus one is 3.5 times 3 is 10.5. So on average, if I use magic missile on this, I kill it. 
shall we see how averages work out? May I remind you... <laughs> May I remind you of the great um, concealed debacle. But I think we got him. That's, uh, that's plenty. We were above average. Boom. Dead. Uh, alright. Good. The other one, then, is... Oh, wait, I... Oh, actually, I only had two actions there. I don't know why I rolled three times. So we just barely managed to do it. That was way riskier. Not really. I mean, it wouldn't have done much Delurian. But... Yeah, I forgot I had to sustain the calm. Okay, so this thing is still sitting in its, uh, in its hole. 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, we will allow that. And we will devise the best stratagem known to mankind. No one's ever seen a stratagem like that. Good enough. damage. Lurian is um, not going to raise his shield. He's going to Vitality Lash. Alright, it's fine. Crit. Fuck. Maleg will move here. Uh, he'll mark him as his prey. And he'll fire off an arrow. Crit. We like to see those things. 28 damage. Not super hot. Uh, hey! He is adjacent to a surface. Well, wait a minute. Things are always going to be adjacent to a surface unless they're flying. There you go. Okay, there's no point sustaining the palm. Uh, so we'll just do a needle dart. Very, it's going to be very hard every time I say that. Do not say needle dick. Um, and there you go. A little bit more damage. So now its first action is... Uh, the DC-10 Athletics check. Is that... No, whoops. Plus 12, yeah. So unless he rolls a 1. Yeah, he pulls it out. Um, no longer immobilized. Then I guess he'll just shoot bone shards, really. Miss. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah. Painful, isn't it, dude? Alright, Wibble. Check out this stratagem. Boom. That might be a crit. Oh, it is, it is, it is. And I think that'll do it. Like shooting fish in a barrel. End encounter. 90 XP for that little fish barrel shootout. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, okay, so... Then we have to break down this door or pick it open. Maleg actually is the lockpick expert, and I want Wibble to give him Atari's Thieves tool. So that, uh... I'm hoping that that actually counts for his thievery checks. See, it doesn't, does it? How do you make that count? Oh, I guess maybe if I go to specifically pick lock. Pick a lock thievery. 
No, not even with that. Nothing. Nothing will add that plus one automatically. Even though he is wearing it, he doesn't have to invest it. You would just... I mean, obviously, when you're playing pen and paper or something like that, you would just write that in. Pick locks plus one or something, you know, next to your thievery skills that you just reminded. Um... But for us, um, I mean, I, yeah, I still have to remember. I just don't have a great way to remind myself. And it's obviously not that big of a deal. But yeah, so we can just click plus one and. All right, success. Cracked it open. And we get the copper key. Go straight to Lurian. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today. Uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the new party. You know, it's a bummer we lost the old party. Uh, they were near and dear to my heart. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be some deficiencies with this new party. But overall, I, I can't complain too much about the performance so far. Uh, Lurian seems very tanky, so that's good. Uh, I mean, sure, he's gotten a little lucky, but still. Uh, Maleg's damage seems quite nice. Quite nice indeed. Being able to crit for potentially like 70 damage or whatever is pretty nice. Um, and hacks. Yeah, the fact, well, the fact that it doesn't count for the multiple attack penalty. And that makes it a lot better. That's very good. Um, Plishy, yeah, kind of already proven himself. That Disney color is very good. Calm, extremely good. I mean, as far as control is concerned, very nice. Obviously, I focused more on control than damage. Most of this stuff is just control. But, I mean, you kind of want that. We have damage. And then Wibble is still Wibble. So, overall, not too shabby of a group. We'll see how they continue to fare, though. We probably should go back up and deal with uh, Volok, or whatever his name is, though. I think that's kind of plot relevant to do. Tough battle, but plot relevant. For now, though, my name is Mang. Game watching has been Pathfinder 2nd Edition Abomination Vaults, and I'll see you fine folks in the next part.